don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. All right. What's well, cracking? Welcome 2024. How are you all doing? Good morning. <clears throat> Today is January 2nd, 2024. This is episode number 526 of the Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Brief. I am your host, Dr. Gerald Ozier, and over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Space Tacos, James Adekudo, Johnny Five, the New Year's Eve baby, Chinadu, James McQuiggan, a hundred thousand subs on YouTube, folks on LinkedIn, the Yeet crew with Marcus Kyler steering the helm. Folks on LinkedIn, folks on YouTube, long timers and first timers, we're all gonna be shredding the top cybersecurity news stories of the day. And I'll be giving my expert opinion and analysis on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner. So how can you drive cyber risk reduction for your business stakeholders? Or if you're looking to break into the industry, don't worry, we got room in here for you. We always make the circle as wide as it needs to be to accommodate one more. And you will be asked in any single uh, cybersecurity job interview, how do you stay current in the industry? Right here, this daily cyber threat brief, mwah, chef's kiss, it's a good one. Plus, look at that, Toasty Pops, Valentino, Jeff Watala, Augusta Delgado. The networking in here is top notch, my friends. So say what's up, comfy up, come back tomorrow. It's more of the same. It's all about good times. But before we get into the good times, let me say shout out and thanks to the stream sponsors, starting with Barricade Cyber Solutions, y'all. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Priceless Pancakes with the Super Chat. I haven't seen you since last year either, Priceless Pancake. I haven't done this stream since last year, am I right? We just become best friends, yep. All right, thank you, Priceless Pancake. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses recover from cyber attacks. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, dedicated hardworking business owners into turmoil, but Barricade Cyber Solutions knows how to mitigate the damage done. Check them out at barricadecyber.com. Links in the description below. James McQuiggan from 35,000 feet coming over the top rope with a super chat. Yep. Congrats on the 100K subs to you, the mods, the community. Lots of success in 2024. Keep networking. Hashtag coffee cup cheers. Hashtag team live. Heck yeah, James. I'll coffee cup cheers that to you too. I'm completely off sugar now, by the way. So it's black coffee for the rest of my life. Let's go. Oh, that's good coffee, my friends. All right. Woo. James K passed the sis. Be right in the nick of time for 2023 goals. Nice job, James K. All right. Also want to say shout out and love to Panopsi. Get a partner who understands your cybersecurity program and your business goals. Your cyber budget and team deserve a high-end consultant who can come and, you know, basically deliver value to you, whether it's tactical value, like running a tabletop exercise or doing a quantified risk assessment or more strategic value, like where should we be going in 2024? Should we invest in an in-house SecOps capability or outsource to MDR? That is a very important decision to make, and it's a very expensive mistake if you make it wrong. So believe me, Panopsi.com, they can help you get what you need. Uh, James McQuiggan, I'm sweet enough. Thank you, James McQuiggan. Also want to say shout out to Anti-Siphon Training. Guys, listen up. This one's important. Anti-siphon training is disrupting the traditional cybersecurity training industry by providing high-quality, cutting-edge education to everyone, regardless of their financial position. 
Use the links in the description below. I have specific links going to John Strand's Active Defense and Cyber, Dece Cyber Deception course, which you could take for $0 for free at the end of the month in January 2024. And there's another link for the first week in February where you can take another John Strand-led course, SOC Core Skills, for absolutely free. Don't miss this opportunity. It comes around a couple times a year, but they're not guaranteed. And it's definitely happening at the end of January, early February. So giddy up on that. I can't recommend it enough. All right. Want to remind each of you that each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Brief is worth half a CPE, a continuing professional education credit. So if you have certifications like James K does, uh, recently minted uh, CISSP, take a screenshot of the stream with your name here saying what's up. That's why I have your name on the screen for chat so you can grab a screen cap. File it away in a folder, and then when it comes time to do your CPEs, just count the number of files, multiply by 0.5. Feel good that you didn't just spend hours anguishing over where to get CPEs and then move on to the next important thing, all right? If you're not sure what to say, hashtag Team SC in chat, Team SC in chat. We are one Simply Cyber community, and I am so happy to have you here. Past 100,000 subs uh, over the weekend. Way to go, team. Way to go, community. Super awesome. And if your first episode is today, your very first episode, drop a hashtag first timer in chat. We love welcoming our first timers. We got a little emote for you. Welcome to the party, pal. We got a little sound effect for you. So let us know if it is your first episode, hashtag first timer. Yeah, I mean, Amish Runaway, you, you would have to use your real name when you do your certs, but I mean, it, it would be a... It would be pretty easy to, to demonstrate to an auditor that you are Amish Runaway and also uh, your real name. All right. Hey, Team SC, I see you checking in here. Joel Belton's back in the house. Nice to see you, Joel. All right. And final, final, final thing. Color me sink. Color me sink. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. Haircut fish. Come on, haircut fish. It's not your first time. All right. Hey, uh, final thing. I don't prep or research any of the stories that are coming up. I don't even really know what stories are coming up, but that's how we roll here. Let's go riding, riding uh, YOLO. All right. Do me a favor. Sit back, relax, and let's let the cool sounds of the hot news Mercy! wash over us all in an awesome wave. I will see you all. Hey, Dre Fish, first timer. Welcome to the party, pal. All right, y'all. Settle in. Get your coffee. Let's do some work. Good morning, Christina Paulika. Christina, that book's website's almost up. You're going to love it. All right. Let's do the news. Let's get to work. From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the cybersecurity headlines for Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. I'm Steve Prentice. Swedish national grocer stung by cactus. The grocery chain Co-op, which has 800 stores in Sweden, has appeared on the Tor leak site of the Cactus Group, with company ID cards published as proof of a hack. According to Bleeping Computer, this happened due to a third-party software provider, Visma, V-I-S-M-A, that manages payment systems for the supermarket chain. Visma had confirmed that they were affected by the Kaseya cyber attack, which was a Revil encryption operation. The Cactus operation became known in May of last year. All right. Hey, really quickly, Priceless Pancake with a super chat. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Way to go, Priceless Pancake. Basically told, starting today, your full-time security nod, half InfoSec, half help desk. Way to go. That is fantastic. Judges, we're going to count that as a, a breaking in. I came in like a All right. Very nice. Congratulations. Super cool. Way to, way to be able to really dig in and focus. All right. And, and thank, you, thank you for sharing the news. Cactus Ransomware. You don't hear about this one too often. Uh, but basically, it, it is emerging as a uh, a relatively serious threat actor that you do need to um, be mindful of. I think that I've only seen them in European theater. So again, if you're you're not 
you're not really ever protecting from a specific ransomware threat actor unless your information security program is like very matured, like borderline optimized. Um, so you're just doing the best practices of protection and uh, recovery uh, controls. But this particular one, what I what I wanted to point out is the attack came through a third party supplier. Again, guys, in 2024, if you want a, a particular goal um, to yeah, you can see right here, supply chain attack. If you're if you're interested in a goal, like here's my thing: if your information security program is re uh, re um, reactive and like you know ad hoc at best, like tier zero, like you you don't actually have a formal program. You're just like kind of running around like the little Dutch boy and like fixing like whatever problems there are for whatever reasons. Hey, Becky Gaylord with the super chat. Thank you, Becky. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Happy New Year to you, Becky. Um. If you're if you're reactive and, and don't have a program in place, then yeah, like supply chain is important, but like you really should focus on fundamentals, right? Like multi-factor authentication, patching all the things, some detection and awareness, EDR, awareness training, privileged access management, if you can if you can wrench that in there. But <clears throat> but once you get past the you know basics, right, then I would encourage you to evaluate your supply chain. Um, and think about what the impacts could be of that, because we're seeing it over and over again, where third party uh, breaches are leading to incidents for your business, which sucks, right? Like um, you, you're working your tail off. Oh, hold on. Space Tacos did gifted subs. Thanks, Space Tacos. Can we just become best friends? Yeah. Love it. So you're working your butt off and then some jack wagon at a different company uh, causes a breach for you. Like that's not good. And so I would do two things. One, NIST cybersecurity framework has an, an entire supply chain um, function or not function, um, like whatever they call it, category uh, for you to look at and at least get some shape on what you could do for supply chain controls. Secondly, when you're doing awareness training, educate your end users around Hey guys, like I know everybody wants to like go ham um, in 2024 and do all the things, but we we really got to be careful about where we're putting our data. It can lead to a long term exposure and a huge financial penalty. You're feel free to be a little hyperbolic and exaggerated to make the point for this particular one, because if the end users in the business don't see like the consequences of going ham with uh, supply chain people, they're going to do it anyways. They're going to be like, yeah, I hear you, Jerry. I get it. But this this is a really cool opportunity. We're going to push all our data up into this cloud AI, next gen, single pane of gas situation. And it's going to tell us the optimized way to like invest in 2024, right? It's a turnkey solution. And then like they push all your data up there and then it immediately gets hacked. And like, you're like, oh my God. Bro, you're killing me. You're killing me. Oh! So it's definitely it's definitely one where you want to exaggerate a little bit for impact. Don't lie, obviously, but you can cherry pick um, stories to to kind of uh, support your argument. And just be mindful. I, I would I would strongly consider putting in fundamental supply chain controls a bit. You can't eliminate all the risk, obviously, uh, but really focus around access. For those third-party supply chain people, who, what do they have access to? And then mindful of like basically data governance. Like what data are you sticking up in some third parties uh, systems and how do you control that, right? It's like once it's there, it's kind of there. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, in black, Basta Decryptor allows recovery of victims' files temporarily. Researchers at Security Research Labs, SR Labs, found the weakness in the encryption algorithm used by the Black Basta gang. It allows for a one file at a time recovery of files over 5K in size and allegedly works on files encrypted between November 2022 and December 2023. Leaping Computer has learned, however, that Black Bastards developers have fixed the bug, preventing the decryption technique from being used in newer attacks. All right. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, two things. One, uh, the most em emergent thing is if you are hit with a Black Basta ransomware attack there's a decryptor okay now it only works obviously on a limited set but if you got hit with black basta it's worth trying this decryptor second of all <coughs> excuse me threat actors <coughs> threat actors who write software are humans and they make 
mistakes and bugs and stuff. And, you know, this is, this is an example of how it happened, right? There's a flaw in their um, encryptor. Um, so there's a basically an exploit. So this is an oper this is an example of like, I don't want to call it hack back, but basically somebody did security research on the encryption of the black Basta and found a bug and then, you know, exploited it. So that that's awesome. I love it. I love it. I know the black Basta people are pretty pissed. I'm sure. Uh, cause this is basically taking, taken out of off their plate, right. Taking the, um, and the role that they got in the, in the soup line off their plate. Now, Two things I want to point out. One, if you got hit with Black Blackbuster ransomware, chances are you've already kind of like dealt with the problem, right? You either paid for it, you rebuilt, whatever. So the there's a, probably a very small set of businesses that were like actively under attack where this decryptor is going to help them out. The, so you so you might ask yourself, well, what's the value of this? If they've already recovered, if they've already paid the ransom, what's the value? So for a victim organization, one, if you've paid the ransom, you're screwed. You're not getting your money back. It's not like Blockbuster says like, ah, here's your refund. You kept the receipt, right? 30 days. Um, but if you had files that got encrypted and you couldn't recover, you you basically, like, I think the ideal victim here is you got encrypted, you refused to pay the ransom, and you're, you've like recovered somewhat, but you're still kind of operating in a limited capacity, this could help in, in that way. Also, maybe you had some old files, some uh, legacy some legacy information, sunsetted databases that you don't really need for business operations, but maybe you need them for uh, reconciliation for year end or something like that. And you got hit with Black Basta back in February. That's an example where it could come. So I just, I just want to point out, it's, it's not a completely wasted effort building this free decryptor and making it available to victims because there is different victims uh, needs basically who got hit with ransomware. Uh, yep. Definitely like hacking back. That's what it sounds like. Uh, and way to go law enforcement. I'm actually pumped that law enforcement is putting in effort to do analyzation of uh, these tools to see if there's bugs that can be exploited. We got to fight. Here's the thing. Like, guys, ransomware has been a blight for like seven years. We as an uh, industry and law enforcement and everybody, everybody that's on the good side, we need every everything we can get to, to fight ransomware. And I'll take this. This this does happen from time to time. I'd say like maybe once every year, once every two years, this happens. Cyber attack hits Boston area hospital. Ooh. The Anna Jakes Hospital, an independent, not-for-profit community hospital about 35 miles north of Boston, remained open to patients after suffering the latest in a wave of cyber attacks against hospitals. This incident occurred on December 24th, disabling their electronic health record system and causing the facility to turn away ambulances on December 25th. Oh. No mention has been made regarding the nature of the attack so far. New York hospitals... All right, so I guess we're not gonna. Hey, Hector Rivera, first timer. Welcome to the party, pal. What's up? Welcome to the party, pal. Um, okay, so check this out. If, you know, some of you do know that I'm I'm from the Boston area, so obviously this one hits a little bit. My my uh, cousin's actually paramedic in um in Brighton. <laughs> He's in Austin, Brighton. Getting his coffees at Honeydew. All right. Anyways, um, dude, this sucks. Okay, so threat actors take down a hospital on Christmas Day. You piece of crap. Like you suck, man. Like I feel like there's like shooting a medic in a war zone. Like what are you doing? Like there are. I get that you are a equal opportunity criminal, but dude, come on. A freaking hospital on Christmas day, a hospital on any day is kind of deplorable. A hospital on Christmas day, you suck a special kind of suck. Um, the good news is on Friday, they said they were back up. So they were down for a few days. Um, I would imagine again, I worked in a hospital, uh, environment for several years. So, um, typically you know, the, the, the ability to deliver patient care is not entirely compromised in a lot of instances. Um, so, 
it's not like everybody all of a sudden got ejected from the hospital. Like, hey, get up out of your bed, grab your gurney, and let's go. Like, we're under cyber attack. But it does it does impact. They didn't have access to the medical records, which is a big deal. Um, and whenever I talk about attacks on hospitals, I almost exclusively focus on the patient. But it's important to note that, and I, I know, like, in comparison to patient safety, business doesn't seem to make a world of difference. No one's going to care. But think about this hospital for a second. In the United States, if you haven't been paying attention, there is this uh, paradigm shift where it's more about how many patients can a doctor touch in a single shift because they can bill for each one of those. And the way they bill is by documenting exactly what they did in the medical record. Yes, the medical record does help us make sure that if you got 20 cc's of penicillin or whatever, that you don't get another 20 cc's of penicillin right afterwards. And you can do handoffs and continuity of care and all these other things are great for medical record. And you can go to another doctor and get all that stuff. But here's the real deal. Business uh, hospitals are businesses. Hospitals want to make as much money as they can off their clinical staff. The way they do that is by billing insurance companies. The way they bill the insurance companies is by looking exactly what the doctors did and billing for all of that. So when the EHR is down, basically the doctors are are giving medical care. The nursing staff is giving clinical care. And they are not able to document it really in an effective way. So they're probably on paper charts, which is fine. But then someone's got to go back and hand type, do data entry from the paper charts into the EHR backwards. You have to make sure that there's no <clears throat> errors. You have to make sure there's no omissions. You need to make sure that everything's accurate. And there's a high probability that it will not be because it's a human. there's a human workflow involved here now. So that hospital is probably losing money or wait for it, you're getting double stuffed um, like an Oreo as a victim because maybe as a patient, you don't get um, the patient care that you're supposed to receive. And then you get double billed or billed for something that didn't happen and enjoy the rabbit hole that you're about to go down, the, the wormhole vortex you're about to go down as you chase down um, like mis, uh, misappropriate or inappropriate billing light items for healthcare. And you're trying to tell the hospital, uh, the insurance company, you didn't receive that treatment if you even catch it. So anyways, it, this sucks. Like this sucks on multiple levels. Ew, 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 ew. So gross. Sue cloud provider for return of data. Two New York hospitals, also not-for-profits, are seeking a court order to force the Boston-based cloud storage company Wasabi Technologies to, quote, return stolen data stored on one of the servers by the Lockbit ransomware gang, end quote. According to Bleeping Computer, the Carthage Area Hospital and Claxton Hepburn Medical Center were attacked in September, with the Lockbit affiliate renting cloud storage at Wasabi to store stolen data. The hospitals are requesting the court to force Wasabi to provide and delete the data from their servers. All right. So two things. One, um, just retroactively for law enforcement, making that decryptor. Listen, if, if I'm going to an opportunity to play some Warren G and Nate dog and drop a Chief Wiggum emote in chat, you know I'm going to get on that. I'm going to giddy up all day on that. All right. So Wiggum in the house. All right. Um, so this is kind of a, a, a ransomware roundup. They usually do this at the end of the week. Uh, I, things are kind of screwed up because of the year, but Lockbit targets hospitals. Now, two things. One, uh, it's important to note uh, a couple things. One, Ohio State Lottery, we talked about it last week in the news. They came out and said they got ransomware. Here is my shocked face. Seriously, like they said, we, we don't know what it is. We're not disclosing anything. And it was all day, every day, obviously, a ransomware incident. Obviously. I wish I had that sound effect uh, of Anton Dotson. <laughs> obviously. So they finally came out and said it was Lockbit. Uh, what I want to point out here is one thing. This is the second story in a row of hospitals getting hit. Listen, law enforcement in a, you know, like in one of the most glorious uh, coordinated efforts of takedowns took down Black Cat ransomware, Alfie Black Cat last week or like two weeks ago, within the last 10 days, it doesn't matter. And Black Cat and Lockbit 
as organizations have been seen kind of like giving each other verbal back rubs on the dark web, not physical back rubs, but like, you know, like respect, right? Like the, the block bit and black cat are, are, are doing that. Okay. They're almost like proto enemies. So think of like Iceman and Maverick, right? Like, Oh, you're my enemy. Oh, you're my adversary. But like respect, right? Like, so now Lockbit and black cat are, are like, you know, high five in the locker room and stuff. And black cat got taken down. Black cat came back up for a hot minute just by setting up new infrastructure. And we didn't cover this in the news, but they said that they were pulling off all the restrictions from their affiliates on who they could target. So black cat basically had a light, um, you know, guidance or standard that you wouldn't attack critical infrastructure, right? You wouldn't attack, um, you know, hospitals or you wouldn't attack nuclear uh, facilities or whatever, right? Like now they were under the auspices that it was like doing a good thing. Like, oh, we're only going to hit corporate businesses and don't worry about it. But in reality, Black Cat basically used to be called Dark Side and they hit Colonial Pipeline and the U.S. federal government um, basic, it was like waking up, um, like I, sometimes I do the wrestling references cause I grew up in the eighties, but like, it's like basically, um, when dark side hit colonial pipeline, we heard like the undertaker entry music and then undertaker, which was the U S federal government came haul and butt from the locker room and slid into the uh, ring and just started raining down um, you know, punches and elbows on dark side. It was like one of the swiftest responses I've ever seen from uh, a, a first world power onto a cyber criminal ransomware gang. And dark side basically disbanded immediately, right? And then Black Cat came and everybody believed Black Cat was dark side and all this. So when Black Cat had this don't hit critical infrastructure, it wasn't because they were nice people. It was because they did not want like the demolition you know, demolition or like road warriors, two people coming out of the, uh, out of the locker room and, 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 you know, coming down. Okay. So having said all that after law enforcement kicked a mud hole in their butt, they said, okay, like everything's good. Like, like anything can be attacked now. So I think what we're beginning to see is some of the fallout from that position change that anything can go. So Lockbit, uh, which is not Black Cat, but Lockbit is seeming to increase activity in targeting these individuals. And we're just seeing a general overall, um, at least in the healthcare space. Um, again, healthcare has been hit regularly. They're usually at the top, um, in the top three uh, industries to get hit with ransomware. Manufacturing has notoriously been number one, although it is sliding slightly backwards. So anyways, that, that's what's up with this, okay? And now a word from today's episode sponsor, NetSPI. Take the hassle out of dealing with alert fatigue, validation, and prioritization. Instead, use NetSPI's ASM platform to hone in on what's actually important. Attack surface vulnerabilities constantly evolve, causing a lack of visibility and overwhelm for your security teams. Start the new year off right by partnering with NetSPI to enhance your security program. Visit netspi.com slash ASM to learn more. That's N-E-T-S-P-I dot com slash ASM. All right. Hey, guess what, first timers? This is what we do every mid-roll too. Get some of this. All right, I see Timothy Libert and Edor Abraham, first timers in the chat. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. All right, guys. Hey, holla, holla, holla. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank you for being part of the crew that drove the Simply Cyber YouTube channel into six digits as far as subs go. 100,000 uh, over the weekend. Woke up to that. Um, and yes. And uh, it's just so cool. It's so cool. And guys, we're we're just we're just continuing. The train that simply cyber is a bullet train, right? This thing is full speed, full tilt. A hundred thousand. It was like a signpost that just went whipping by. We're cruising, y'all. All aboard! Toot toot. Thank you, uh, sponsors: Barricade, Anti Siphon, Panopsi, um, for your continued support. Again, links in the description below. And if you're getting value from the stream 
If you're a first timer, I ask you every day to do this. The reason is hit the like button. If you are a first timer, you may have found us because last episode, I asked people to hit the button or the like button on YouTube. If you hit the like button and enough people do it, it triggers the algorithm to go tell more people looking for cybersecurity content to, you know, like, oh, you might like this. And it's part of the reason that we got to 100,000 subs, frankly, people, is because all of you showed up and showed out. So thank you. Thanks, Cat GPT. Shall we play again? All right, guys. Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Is Jenny here? All right, hold on one second. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who has the baton right now. If you give me a hot minute, I, I'll figure it out. Oh, Rob Navarre is here. Thank you, Jenny. Jenny Housley, Mod Extreme. Rob Navarre currently has the baton. So if Rob Navarre can do me a solid and tag somebody, I would love it. For everybody else, let me tell you, especially first timers, please listen up because this is a huge value uh, to, to you personally. And it's something that the Simply Cyber community does. If you would like to build a professional network of meaningful, supportive connections that deliver value into your LinkedIn feed, check it out. Go on LinkedIn and search for this hashtag. We own this hashtag. We, each of us, me, you, Kimberly, Brian Peak, Alpha Sierra, Brian Dubs, right? Go on LinkedIn, search for this hashtag, find the people posting, find Rob Navarra's post, find, you know, there's been a, a couple hundred at this point. Connect with the person in the post, comment on their post, connect to the people in comments. Five minutes a day of active work. Once you're in the comments, other people coming behind will connect with the people in the comments and pick you up. They'll connect with you. So it's recursive. You will absolutely build a professional network in five minutes a day. In two weeks time, come back. I challenge you. Come back in two weeks and tell me that your network on LinkedIn isn't awesome and that your LinkedIn feed isn't valuable. I, 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 I literally, this isn't like a confrontation. It's like, I'm inviting y'all. I'm inviting you. Do it and see what happens. It's awesome. Glum Hippo's in the hizzy. What's up, Glum Hippo? Thanks for the super chat. Can we just become best friends? Yep. With a status code, I think. Uh, I, I don't know the 300 series status codes. I know 301 is a redirect. Um, all right. Get your hey, hey, hey's on. Oh, la, 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 la's. All right, guys, really quickly. Uh, every single day of the week has a special segment. And um, on Tuesdays, we do Tidbits Tuesdays. On Monday, we do um, Monday we do uh, Simply Cyber Community Member Feature. So because we missed yesterday and I find the Simply Cyber Community Feature vitally important, I want to do both today really quickly. I'd like to introduce you to DJ BSEC. This is DJ BSEC right here. DJ BSEC is a longtime mod. He has his own uh, channel. He was doing Advent of Cyber Streams. He's one of the he's one of the three audiophile uh, uh, team members who ch uh, ch <laughs> who you know basically snapped my hand when uh, I touched the sliders on the mixing board. Uh, go check him out. He's got his own Twitch channel. Really, really great guy. Uh, big Texas high school football. If you know him, uh, then you're fortunate. And if you don't, make an opportunity to get to know him. He's a really, really great person. Thank you for all you do for the channel, BSEC. Um, and super pumped to be friends with you. Also want to say on Tidbits Tuesday really quick, I can go into greater detail on this. I just wanted you to know, uh, for me, share your own personal New Year's Eve uh, party plans or whatever you want to call them uh, in chat. But just to give you a little bit behind the screen on who I am, uh, we have a New Year's Eve tradition in my house. Me, Mrs. Osher, my two boys, we, we buy a million, well, we buy like whatever appetizers you want. So there's no rules. Kids can pick whatever they want, as much as they want. Uh, and we just make a big smorgasbord of heavy hors d'oeuvres. And we play we all night with um, like, we, we get scratch tickets equal to the year. So we had 24 scratch tickets this year. And every, um, you know, like 624, we all scratch one. 724, we all scratch one. We just gorge on food and we play we bowling, we boxing, uh, circus games. It's a lot of fun. That's our New Year's Eve tradition. I'm already looking forward to next New Year's Eve. I can't believe uh, how, how fun it is. I'd love to hear what your New Year's Eve uh, traditions are in chat and maybe during Jaw Jack and we can spend a minute on it. All right, let's get back to the news, y'all. 
uh, and get into that. Let's go, let's go, let's go. New DLL search order hacking technique can bypass Windows protections. In a report shared with the Hacker News, the security firm Security Joe's says this new technique could give threat actors the ability to run malicious code on Windows 10 and 11 machines. They said, quote, the approach leverages executables commonly found in the trusted WinSXS folder and exploits them via the classic DLL search order hijacking technique, end quote, thus removing the need for elevated privileges. A link to this report is available in the show notes to this episode. All right. Terrapin flaw. All right. So this, I'm going to, um, hold on one second. Uh, all right. So here we go. This is how this attack works. Okay. Basically. So I, I, I don't know if there is a, um, a patch for this. Okay. All right. Hold on. Ah, you gotta patch it. I, so this is not a windows operating system vulnerability. Okay. This is an interesting, uh, bug and, it, and it's one worth noting. Cause we, we actually see a very similar kind of attack. It's not exactly the same, but a similar attack with downgrading what encryption you use in a uh, trusted connection. Okay, so here's the deal. DLLs are dynamically linked libraries. They're basically portable executable files, Windows executables, except you don't double click on it like calc.exe and pop something. It's a, it's a binary program on a Windows operating system, but the benefit of it is instead of every piece of software being monolithically built to stand on its own, what people do and what Windows has done, and it makes a lot of sense, is developers will write their software to run on a Windows machine and they'll know what dynamic link libraries are available on a Windows operating system and reach into that. So think of it as like, I mean, it's it's really appropriately named a dynamically linked library. If you think about it, it's a shared resource of function calls and APIs that a developer knows is going to be on the box. I'll just give you a quick example, like opening a um, a network connection or writing to disk, right? Th those fundamental functions are going to happen no matter what. So Windows bakes in DLLs that does that. So a developer can just write the code, which, which basically results in the developer having lighter code, smaller file size, faster speed, um, also, they don't have to worry about maintaining or managing any of that code and functionality. So it's less of a burden on the developer and the third party. So you can write code faster, get to market sooner. Windows loves it. Windows will support the DLLs. Now, here's the deal. Because the DLLs are on the Windows box, okay? And, and uh, like, if this is obvious to you, please bear with me. Like, there's different skill levels in chat. And I want to make sure that I, I explore this one. Uh, so people understand because you, you don't see this very often. People don't really talk about it. So you've got this like library of DLLs over here. Okay. Imagine imagine books in a bookcase, right? And you're you're writing your code over here and you run your program. This is like B sex, um, you know, B sex like DJ app, right? It you it, you see you double click it and it like makes your mixing board perfect. Okay. And he relies on DLLs. So when when uh B sec writes that code. He says, go to the library and grab this DLL, grab this book, grab this book, okay? Now, you can write full-length path names like C colon backslash blah, 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 Windows 32. This is why like the C colon backslash Windows or System 32 Windows directory is well known. It's because that's where the DLLs go. So if he writes it and goes in there. Now, the problem is if you do like not um not explicit links but you just do kind of relative links so you just say like slash um you know whatever dll right there's an opportunity there where you can have it look in the wrong directory right you can kind of control flow that second of all if a threat actor is able to get access to that system 32 directory and overwrite a dll well, then they can do that they could trojanize a dll right so when bsec like let's say the book is um Mix, you know, whatever, like mixer.dll or network.dll or whatever, or, you know, whatever. So BSEX code says, go grab mixer.dll and pull a function from it. 
and the software is like, yes, let's go. Mixer.dll. And a threat actor has already overwritten or trojanized Mixer.dll. BSEC's going to pull that in naturally with all the permissions and all the authorization that is executing under the BSEC app application. Do you see what I'm saying? So that when they say search order hijacking in this case, what they're saying is you might be able to go to a couple different DLLs. So for resiliency and for continuity, uh, the piece of software goes and looks for mixer.dll and that file is not there. It's an old piece of Windows operating system or it's a new piece and they've they've deprecated that DLL. It doesn't matter, right? So they might say, okay, if it's not mixer DLL, then go to mix, mix read write DLL or go to old mix.dll, right? Like you can have a couple different DLLs that have that same functionality. I know it sounds bloated and redundant, but just trust me that you can get there multiple ways. And this makes it more rigid. I mean, not rigid, more flexible for the software not to crash, right? If you've ever run a program and it's crashed and said, can't find DLL. And you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Sorry, Kennedy. Right? So search order hijacking is basically getting in front of that list of like, is option one available? Is option two available? Is option three available? If you can get into the front of it, then you you can control what option the victim is going to get. And, and basically that's what's going on here. I, I know it's kind of hard to like explain it with hand gestures and a lot of waving around, but um, it, it's, it's worth noting. I will say, if you want to get a little bit more technical, a little bit in the weeds, understanding how the Windows um, APIs work and system calls at the operating system level applications, uh, getting the kernel to reach in. Uh, this is where software exploitation can start to uh, manifest and really getting into the weeds and stuff. So like, this is a nice... Um, this is a nice, like, you know, entry level amuse bouche, if you will, um, of getting into operating system um, software exploitation. Okay, I saw a super chat come through. Let me spend a second looking at that. Justin Jackson in the house, new here, 15 year military policeman, transitioning to cyber. Love it. The channel helps so much. Okay, so first of all, Justin Jackson, thanks for the super chat. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Second of all, Justin Jackson, you said new here. Um, judges, does that qualify as a first timer? Yes, it does. Okay. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. And Justin Jackson for the triple threat. Regulators. Justin Jackson, former law enforcement, so he gets a regulator mount up sound effect. And finally, Justin, just so you know, um, on the Simply Cyber YouTube channel, I have an entire playlist for military to cyber. I have a lot of content specifically for a person like you going from military to cyber. So um, definitely grab that. And if you can't find it, ask me a jaw jacking, which is something we do at the end and I will get it to you. Threatens SSH protocol security. This flaw, which is being tracked as CVE 2023-48795, allows attackers to downgrade a connection's security by breaking the integrity of the secure channel. Researchers at Ruhr University Bochum, who discovered it, stated, quote, by carefully adjusting the sequence numbers during the handshake, an attacker can remove an arbitrary number of messages sent by the client or server at the beginning of the secure channel without the client or server noticing it, end quote. In their analysis of the vulnerability, Qualys has stated, quote, in a real world scenario, an attacker could exploit this vulnerability to intercept sensitive data or gain control over critical systems using administrator privileged access, end quote. They continued, quote, this risk is particularly acute for organizations with large interconnected networks that provide access to privileged data, end quote. All right. All right. couple things. I didn't know this story was coming up. So like me just flipping out on DLL order hijacking and then talking about downgrading SSH. Thank you, CISO Series, for uh, like teeing me up here. Uh, real quick, Joel Belton with the uh, squad membership. 16 months, blue badge. Looking good, Joel. All right, guys. Uh, Terrapin flaw. Um, so here's the deal. Basically, as I mentioned before, when we make an SSH or secure shell connection from like our box into a Unix machine, um, and, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically making a remote connection into, uh, um, into a remote system, right? You, you, micro, you RDP into it, you SSH into it, whatever it is. Uh, usually it's reserved for Unix machines, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, you don't think about what the level of encryption is on your connection, right? You're just like, oh, I'm SSH'd into the box. 
it's encrypted. I assume secure. Thumbs up. Everybody wins. Well, in reality, there are many different encryption algorithms that you can use to establish a quote unquote secure connection. And because systems like to be robust and flexible and, and able to um, achieve the goal of the connection, what they will do here in SSH's uh, case is they'll have several different encryption algorithms. So imagine if you will, you're going to make an encrypted connection and the server has to be able to make the connection as well as the client. So the server and the client have to agree on an algorithm and they both have to be able to support it. And that's that's the reason, right? Like if I if I came in and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I use whatever, RC4, and the server's like, I can't support RC4. Well, then what are you gonna do? Throw your hands up and walk away? No, you're like, well, do you support Blowfish? Do you support AES? Like, and I know I'm throwing around uh, symmetric and asymmetric, just bear with me here. So you find one that you agree on. Now, what order do you, you don't randomly choose one. There is an order. And basically the most secure one is at the top. And then you go down to least secure. So what they're saying here in this case is that this particular attack allows you to say, hey, somehow, like the person goes to make the connection and they're like, hey, can I connect? And you're like, nope. Can I connect? Nope. Can I connect? Nope. Can I connect? Uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this. What you're asking to connect with right now is a crappy encryption algorithm. I can compromise it. Let's go. That's all the deal is. And then basically the attack at that point happens where the weak encryption algorithm can be broken and the, the attacker can either eavesdrop on the connection. Uh, well, basically eavesdrop on the connection. They talk about privileged administrator access to boxes. That would come as an output of the compromised confidentiality of the encrypted connection because now you're able to basically sniff creds, right? Which is why we don't use Telnet anymore because Telnet sends information in plain text. Same with FTP. You could just grab those creds um, out the sky or off the wire, which is what, what they're saying here. So to say privileged access, like, bro, bro, like, come on now. Like what they're talking about is sniffing creds and then going forward on that. Uh, TLDR, um, re really weird. You don't typically see a, um, a vulnerability score of five, nine, which this one has, uh, there is a, a calculation on how to calculate a CVSS score. So it's not random, but five, nine is definitely not one you see very often. If you're running SSH all over the place, um, you may want to look at this, but in reality, um, I don't think that this is something that you, uh, stop the presses and, and go, go get after. Um, also, I suspect that anybody implementing you know, standard SSH is probably going to be okay with this one. Um, but they do say it's practically exploitable. So you just want to be careful about that. Honestly, if someone's exploiting this in your environment, they're already in your environment. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got bigger problems. There's a mole in your yard. The call is coming from inside the house. If you feel me, okay? Inc. Ransomware claims Xerox breach. The Inc. ransomware group has added the document management company to its Tor leak site, publishing a handful of documents, invoices. Holy crap. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't see this. Super chat. I mean, not super chat. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I always interrupt the, the, the podcast for, the, for only these type of events. Mega Brood announcing that they broke into the cyber field and accepted their offer. They made it. Got the offer last week. Hell yeah. I came in. Yes, sir. Mega Brood, way to go. Way to go. Way to go. That Hansel's so hot right now. Yes, Mega Brood, way to go. It's my absolute favorite thing to celebrate someone getting into the industry. Hell yeah. All right, let's keep going. Amish Runaway, yeah, one to 10 for CVSS scoring. And emails as proof. No mention has been made by the gang regarding the size of the breach. Inc. Ransomware is known to the cybersecurity community and reports show that it has been responsible for up to 40 attacks since emerging in July of last year. Remember our... All right. So I, I'm not familiar with Inc. Ransomware. Um, they attacked Xerox. Xerox is obviously a major company. Um, you don't want to... You don't want to mess around with Xerox. Let's check Xerox's annual revenue. $7 billion. Woo that is some uh, that's some serious copy paper. Uh, so Xerox 
seven billion. Um, they can definitely afford InfoSec, and they got popped. So, you know, Inc. ransomware not to be trifled with. Um, I will just say this is a perfect example of why I tell everybody and why I tell my clients and why I tell any business that I'm responsible for protecting. You, unless you're an optimized level of information security program, which is the highest level, which spoiler alert, most of us don't get to, okay? I've never had an optimized information security program under my, uh, uh, under my stewardship, okay? Which is not a knock, by the way. It's expensive. It's time consuming. It requires a lot of like meta things on the business side to happen in order to achieve like a level five, if you even want that. So it's not a knock. I'm not throwing shade. But what I am saying is, unless you're at that level of maturity, you are not protecting from specific threat actors, like ransomware threat actors. You're just doing all the things to handle ransomware because it's ink today. It's flaming donkey tomorrow. Good. Nice flaming donkey reference. Flaming donkey is a, a, a serious ransomware APT threat actor. You got to be mindful of. It's going to switch. It the, you know the names change. The people stay the same. Just protect fundamentals on ransomware and recover fundamentals on ransomware. Tabletop exercise, etc. Don't like so. It's ink today again. Just do all the things you're supposed to do. And the goal is cyber resiliency. You want to be able to continue to make widgets or deliver healthcare or whatever you're doing your, for a business in a capacity if you are hit with ransomware that you can continue to do it, right? So like simply cyber get hit, gets hit with ransomware, right? My machine gets totally dorked. Guess what? I got a cell phone. It's not going to be great, but I'll do the stream from my phone. Like it's, it'll, it'll probably be terrible, but guess what? It will happen and it will be something. Um, and I'll do manual sound effects. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, that's, what's up. Um, Xerox breached. No one is safe. Hide your, hide your wife, hide your children. No one is safe, um, uh, from ransomware. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the stream. What do we got? 854. Let's go. All right, really quickly, I got a couple things to share with you. If you are just here for the news, I want to thank you very, very much for being here today. Happy New Year. We got a great one. 2024 is looking to be amazing. And I hope all of your personal and professional goals are met this year. I hope you're excited. excited. I hope you're invigorated. I hope you're ready to just run through a wall and tackle your goals. Um, you've got it. Believe me. Go, 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 go. I want to tell everybody two important things. One, to, uh, one is it tomorrow? No, no, no. Um, Thursday at 4.30 p.m., I am hosting a live stream. I do, for if you don't know this, I host a live stream once a quarter. And it's basically, um, it's like a town hall, uh, all hands meeting for the Simply Cyber community. I lead it. It's completely voluntary to attend. But the thing is, I do this full time. I serve you. I serve this community and I take it quite seriously. We have a lot of fun here, but it is real. Um, and I take it that way. So once a quarter, I report to you on what I accomplished the previous quarter aligned with what I told you I was going to do. And if there's any gaps, I explain why there are gaps. And then the part that most people enjoy is I'm going to tell you what you can expect from the channel, from me, from the community in the next 90 to 180 days. It's called accountability, and I, I'm holding myself accountable to you. So come check it out. If you have any feedback, any thoughts, you want to offer suggestions or ideas, we're here to listen. Uh, it's going to be a good time. So Thursday at 4.30 p.m., live on the channel. Come check it out. Another thing that's super, super valuable and uh, I, I, you know, this is what happens when I take time off. Um, you know, not that it's a bad thing, but when I take time off, some stuff happens. Um, I'm sorry. I like just buffer overflowed my brain. Um, another thing today at 1 p.m. And if you can show up, I would love it. It's not scheduled yet, but it will happen today at 1 p.m., 1 p.m. Eastern time. So in four hours from now, I will be going live 
with a brand new show. It's a brand new concept. It's called Cyber Starters. It's an it's an eight episode uh, series. We're gonna do it once a quarter. Me and La- Ryan Lervik, uh, the CEO of Nuvik. And it'll be eight Tuesdays in a row starting today at 1 p.m. And then we'll pause for season two to start in Q2, season three in Q3. And if you are at all interested in learning about entrepreneurship, running a business, marketing, HR, vendors, software, QuickBooks, what mark, like whatever. If you're interested in any of that or you just want to come hang out, the show is set up to talk about that. It's me and Ryan. We have a special guest every week uh, just to tease out some of our guests for this season. We've got Keith Adams, CEO of TCM Security. We've got Alyssa Knight. Um, I think she's the CEO. If not, she's definitely an executive at Knight Studios. Um, we've got um, we've just got some, some A-listers coming down to be our guest and to share their experiences with us. So Cyber Starters, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. for the next eight weeks. Um, look, I, I will post it on social media and let everybody know. It's just I took a few weeks off. and uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, finally, um, finally, um, I want to remind everybody that um, January 11th, a week from Thursday, Mike Saunders from Red Siege is going to be my guest on Simply Cyber Live. Um, and he's an amazing off- offensive security person. Red Siege is a great company. You're going to love that conversation. Believe me. I know that was a lot to digest in a short amount of time. Again, I'm telling you, like I take a few weeks. This is why I always feel bad taking time off. Like I take the time off and then things kind of get backlogged. Um, so if I just jump, jumped a bunch of knowledge on your head, um, sorry, but we've got a lot, we've got a lot in the pipeline already loaded for 2024. If you were here just for the news, thank you so very much. Let me check my calendar really quick and see if we can do a little bit of jaw jacking. Stand by, stand by, stand by. We can do jaw jacking. All right. Hey, real quick. If you were here for the news, thank you so very much. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time for episode 527 of the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. Peace out. If you want to do some jaw jacking, stay tuned because we got that hot in the hot in the hopper. Until next time, stay secure. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Jaw Jack. And I am your host, Jerry Guy. Hopefully you had a great stream uh, with the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. I certainly did. I want to share something with you all really quickly uh, before you peace out. Give me a second. Give me a hot second. Stand by. Stand by to stand by. I want everybody to know that uh, a partner partner of mine, I'm very proud to be associated with this. Um, hold on. That's the wrong... That's the wrong feed. Stand by. Hold on one second. I got to change this. Um, do, do, do. Which one is it? It's this one. No. It's, yeah, this one. Let's do this. All right. Hey, so check it out. You get to see behind the behind the scenes here on what my, my feed looks like. All right. So check it out, guys. Right here, I want everybody to know. I'm going to drop a link to this in chat. But Cybersecurity Central is um it's a non-profit organization i'm huge friends with them kimberly mcknight a- aka kimberly can fix it in chat uh, ms julian in chat uh james driscoll um sean washington i believe is still affiliated with them uh oh you can see their names right here the whole team here i i could have just read it i'm sorry um they they have great content and ms julian just recently did a book review on the cult of the dead cow old school um, and what she wants you to know is that if you share this post, tag cybersecurity central and use the hashtag blog by CC, you can enter a giveaway to win the book. So if you want to, um, learn a little bit about this excellent book and potentially receive a copy of it as a prize, giddy up and check out this, um, entry. And this is why you, 
guys, again, this is why you do the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. You would find out about this in a hot minute. Here we go. I just dropped a link in chat. Um, I don't know if you can click on it, but just go to LinkedIn, search for Cybersecurity Central and giddy up on it. Holler to uh, Cybersecurity Central and all the folks who are over there. And shout out to Ms. Julian who did the blog post. Uh, love it, love it, love it. All right, guys. Got my coffee going. I got to tell you, black coffee, no no uh, sugar. It's kind of rough, but I'm going to get used to it. Lazaro, happy new year with the super chat. SC fam and Dr. Osher watching this live from home on the first day of the job for the new role. LFG agreed. Let's go. Way to go, Lazaro. Super pumped for you. Really enjoyed watching your rise to power uh, as you uh, ex- you know went through the interviewing process and ultimately got the job. Straight crushing it, homie. All right, let's do this. Um, have a good one, Joel Belton. We'll see you. Here we go. Let me get some more of this coffee. Oh my God, so good. All right, what else we got going on, y'all? Um, I'm back in the studio today. Uh, I got a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern time with the graphic designer who's going to be doing a total brand, um, I guess, uplift of the Simply Cyber. So look forward to that. Uh, I've loved Simply Cyber and the, the graphics and everything, but um, we've reached a level of maturity. We're about to unlock a level, 100,000 subs. It was time for a little refresh, spring cleaning, if you will. Looking forward to that. Uh, Guys, Cyber 101, I'm super excited. Josh Mason, um, listen, I am super excited. I got word from the lab platform that the labs are done. My access has been granted into the platform. And like, I'm going to do principal filming this week on it. What does that mean? That means that we are all hands on deck, ready to rock and roll on Cyber 101. Um, Beta testers, I reached out to the beta testers to get their uh, information. I'm going to be sending a communication out uh, probably today uh, or tomorrow, the latest, to the beta testers um, to to kick that into high gear. I am so freaking excited. Uh, The Cyber 101 has been running over me uh, lately, and I've desperately been wanting to get it moved forward. Olu Olu O says, I have a panel interview for my first GRC role this week after a round with the hiring manager. Any tips would be appreciated. Panelists are managers and a director. Okay. Um, well, a couple things. One, in my opinion, um, part of that interview is going to be around fit. If the hiring manager has already interviewed you, Olu, and moved you forward, that means the hiring manager... Uh, who has the authority to decide? And, uh, and again, I have limited information, so I'm speculating here. But they they like you, and they want to see if you're a good culture fit at this point. Because the hiring manager is the one who's going to have to deal with you, right? And and hope that you can deliver on whatever the job is, uh, in this case, GRC, and be able to help them achieve their goals. They've already decided that the answer is yes, or they wouldn't have had you back. With the managers and a director... Um, what I would say is, you know, be comfortable. You absolutely deserve to be there. I would, um, you know, show up a couple minutes early, be fresh. Um, you may want to um, get familiar with one of the cybersecurity stories in the daily cyber threat briefing podcast. Uh, like if there's one that aligns to like the industry that that job is in, one that aligns to the role, what, whatever it is. Um, and just have it at the ready. Don't don't like shoehorn it into the conversation. But there probably will be an opportunity to, ex, you know, like throw it in there and talk about it. And uh, it'll demonstrate that you're staying current, that you're engaged, that you're proactive. Um, I think that all those things would be good. Since it's a GRC role, you might want to take some time. I don't know what your comfort level is, but get familiar with NIST cybersecurity framework. I've got a couple videos on the channel around that. Basically, the reason I suggest that is simply so you get a vibe for a security control framework and the approach of going from reactive to proactive, which is you know kind of like what GRC would be doing. Final, final thing, you may want to think through a couple ideas on information security awareness and like what the value is of that. Um, 
I, just again, because that's like a GRC function, and it would be interesting to hear your thoughts or your ideas. You might even want to uh, bring a solution, like, oh, hey, like I don't know what you guys are doing for infosec awareness, but like, you know, uh, uh, once every two week email that's short and sweet to the point could be valuable, and we could even come up with a quirky name for it so people start expecting it and looking forward to it. Just a thought. Final, 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 final thing, Olu. -u. Definitely make sure you have like one or two questions for them. If they ask you at the end, which they will, do you have any questions for us? It is a absolute, um, I don't want to call it death nail, but like, it's not a good look. If you say, no, I'm good. I got no questions. Have a couple questions ready to go in case you don't think of any during the talk, but you know, there you go. All right. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Dirk Swagger just finished ex my exposure management course. It was absolutely awesome. All right. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, Dirk. Um, if you guys didn't know, um, I don't know. I don't know if there's a bot uh, link for it, but if you guys didn't know, um, I wrote and produced a full um, cyber security exposure, um, continuous threat exposure management course with XM Cyber. This course is free to take. I developed the course. I did all the filming and recording. I developed the curriculum. I developed the quiz questions. I did all these things and you can do, take it for free. Dirk Swagger took it and said really nice things about it. Thanks, Dirk. Uh, I'll drop a link in chat. Go check it out if you're interested in more free education. Put it on your 2024 dream board. All right, let's keep going. Chris Young. If Simply Cyber were going to donate to a nonprofit charity, which one would that be? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Um, I'd have to, I'll have to think about that one. I, I do like um, charities that give most of their money to the actual recipients. I, I hate, I just found out recently that like Goodwill um, is not like the greatest uh, organization for helping people who need help. For example, um, there was one that I, I have to pull it up, Chris Young, but last year, uh, cybersecurity cares, which does an annual tel like uh, fundraising. Um, they did it this year and the charity was domestic violence. But last year, um, they did one that, um, helps feed children. That one is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I don't want to get into it, um, for many reasons, but like when I was younger, I would get like food for Christmas um, just to put it in perspective of some of the things that I had to deal with when I was coming up. So um, like, so uh, feeding children uh, is, is a cause that's very near and dear to my heart. So I would uh, throw that out there as an option. All right. So let's keep going. Will Reed says, I am crazy stoked about cyber starter series. I'm going full-time in cyber entrepreneurship and we'll be watching faithfully. Super dope. Thanks, Will Reed. Yeah, dude, there's a, like literally Will, you're the reason that I thought of like you or like the avatar of you. There's a lot of people who are interested in wanting to like do entrepreneurship, to like hang a shingle, to do side hustles, right? It comes in different forms and factors and stuff. But a lot of people don't know you know, necessarily what to do or how to do it or anything. And guys, listen, just like cybersecurity, the reason Simply Cyber exists is because when I came up in cybersecurity, nobody, there was no like real resources out there. And it's, it's, I want you to not have to deal with that. Same with cyber entrepreneurship. I'm doing this full time now and I've made a lot of mistakes. I, I, I've learned a lot from people who have already like walked the walk. And for me, cyber starters is an opportunity to give back and deliver value and help people make those choices and, and, and really crush it. Yeah. So Jesse Johnson, I know about you. Unix guy and I actually worked to collaborate quite a bit. The problem is Unix, I mean, it's not a problem, but Unix guy lives in Western Australia and the, like the time zones are super difficult uh, to coordinate. All right. Um, all right, so Valentino says, did you hear that Unix guy is about to launch his own GRC course? Oh, I, I did not hear that. Um, but I mean, good on him. Good on him. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity out there. We'll see, we'll see what he uh what he charges for it. I actually thought for a hot minute about I and I still might do this, uh, of increasing the price of the GRC analyst masterclass to ninety-seven dollars. I told someone over the break that it was 
how much it was. And I, I have gotten so many people who are like dumbfounded that I only charge 60 bucks for that course. Um, so anyways, in order to kind of support the channel and the initiatives, I may increase it. Um, that's not a, that's not to scare anyone into buying it now. It's just something I'm thinking about. Um, all right. So Jenny Housley needs a little bit of help. Uh, we'll take care of it, Jenny. Thank you very much. Haircut Fish says, what is something you are planning on learning both cyber related and non cyber related this year? So like, what are some, some of those, uh, new year's Eve goals and plans? Um, so it's a good question. Haircut Fish. Uh, cyber starters is 1 PM Eastern time on Tuesdays. I will, uh, share it in discord and social media. I, I got to get my act together a little bit on that. Samuel 1 PM Eastern time on simply cyber YouTube channel. So for me, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this this year, but I would desperately, desperately want to take Jason Haddock's bug bounty course and then find a CVE. That is a stretch goal for me. It has nothing to do with like, I don't, I'm not a bug bounty person. I'm not a pen tester. I'm not offensive. <laughs> Some people might say I'm offensive, but I'm not an offensive security professional. But for me, I desperately, I've wanted to do it for two years. I just need to, you know, make it a priority. I want to take Jason Haddock's bug bounty course and get a CVE attributed to my name. Uh, I think that would be super fun. Um, non cyber related. I want to, um, I want to take two vacations with my family this year and completely unplug and, and like really unplug. Uh, these last couple of weeks were really nice. Uh, I picked up a new video game. I played a lot of games with my kids. Me and Mrs. Ozier had some nice moments together. Some nice, um, you know, mommy, daddy, you know, like focused on each other time. Uh, it was really nice. I work my ass. I think Kennedy has gone on. <laughs> so hopefully, sorry, Kennedy. I work my butt off. I don't know if you guys know, I work really hard. And um, to be able to take a moment and be with my family and be present, more importantly, is important to me. Uh, so that is something that... Um, it's something that I plan on doing. Catch EP2, who wins at Wii Sports? Uh, I got to tell you, Callan, my my eight-year-old, my youngest, he currently holds the family uh, record for bowling at 194. And hilariously, when we got home from, uh, we went and visited some friends yesterday. Uh, when we got home, my oldest son, I think it really eats him up that, uh, that, that Callan has the record because Grayson played Wii Bowling in the other room for like two hours trying to break the record. And poor kid, he got to 193 twice. Uh, so, you know, these things happen. Oh my God, so good. All right, here we go. Chris Young, what are you saying? Add a GRC contract pen to his merch shop. Oh yeah, pen testing. Yes, hello. I get it. Uh, Eric took a few weeks between jobs last summer. I went to Ecuador with the family. That sounds fun. It was the first time I was on vacation without a job. It was amazing. Yeah. So here, here's the deal. Here, here's kind of like where my head at. You know. And again, um, jaw jacking. It's really, um, it's really just you know us. So the Cyber One Hundred and One course that I'm launching. It is a full semester long course. It's a very involved course. And in my mind, when I launch it, it's going to, uh, you know, after the first couple of weeks, it gets up and running. It's going to kind of, um, you know, be generating revenue for the business basically and allow me to take a breath and focus on all the things I want to focus on. We're doing a lot of podcast launches in, in uh, Q1. I've got the TV show with Night Studios at the end of April. But I want to like breathe and I want like, and, and to me, like the, GR, the Cyber 101 course is basically going to be um, facilitating um, the revenue I need to generate to run the business so I can then uh, relax and not relax in the, in the sense of kicking my feet up, but like be able to focus on the fun stuff I want to do. So that's what's up. All right. 
So CJ says, I was looking at anti-siphon sock class and it says $25 minimum. Here's the deal. I know it says $25 minimum, but what you need to do is there's a little sign here. Let me, let me just show you. Um, this is for everybody. Okay. This is the, oh wait, hold on. Let me, this is it. Okay. Watch this. Which one did CJ want? Um, CJ wanted the sock core skills. There it is. Let's do this. All right, now I'm going to register for the live training. Okay. Now, right here, 20, it looks like 25. Check this out. Scroll down. Scroll down right here. Pay what you can options. For tuition and assistance, click here. Click here. By clicking the link, you acknowledge that as a recipient of tuition assistance, you will not receive a certificate of completion or access to the range, okay? What you will get is the training from John Strand, the full course, everything like that. This is what you do to get it for $0. And really, guys, it's all about the skills, right? Click that. Hopefully, that helps everybody. All right. Uh, Alpha Sierra. Yes. Military to cyber transition resources. Let's go. I got you. Check it out. Um, i I'm sorry to the first timer who's doing military law enforcement, military to uh, cyber. I, I forget. Um, I forget who it was. I'm sorry for that. But what I will tell you is go to simply cyber, uh, dot, you know, youtube.com slash at simply cyber, right? So this right here, then go to playlist, which is this right here. Then on playlists, it's, um, where is it? Here, here it is. Pivot into cybersecurity tailored for U.S. veterans. Okay. Hold on. This isn't right. Hold on. That's not right. That's not right. Hold on. What the hell? I definitely have a playlist for you. Stand by. Oh, right here. Military to cyber. Military to cyber. I knew I had it. Yes, there we go. Yes. All right. So check it out. Um, this is, this is, this is a great place to start. Multiple, multiple, um, streams in here multiple interviews, how to get, um, the GI bill to pay for an entire SANS education. Um, th this is great. This is great right here. So I'll drop this in chat military to cyber. Thank you. All right. All right. A couple more minutes and then I got to go pivot. Oh, so good. Oh, thank you, Shuttle Crap. Yeah, I want to get back on having the SC Cafe playlists going all the time. SC Cafe is another YouTube channel I have that I'm uh, having a little bit of fun with, uh, playing lo-fi music, just chilling. Kind of like, you see what's going on back here? It's kind of like that. Oh, great. Hey, I don't know. Is it worth... Should we have... Um, should we have a military or veterans channel in the Love Fusion Center? I mean, I don't know. Let me know, I guess. Or here, let me. And, and, and please vote honestly on this. Um, just don't say yes just because or whatever. Uh, All right. So this is a, a poll. Should we, should we do a veteran, uh, a veteran or, you know, like basically a, a spot on the discord server for veterans to kind of high five each other. Let me know. Oh, Valentino, Valentino. I'm telling you, nothing makes me, uh, I love saying I got a video for that. It, I love saying that. Be good. Martin Clark. Okay, military channel too busy. 
Because the thing, I mean, the thing is, like, there's a lot of channels that are focused for on very specific things, which makes sense, right? So I don't know if it makes sense for the military one when you could just go in general chat and say, hi, I'm a veteran. Like, any anybody wants some help or I need help? All right. All right. Alpha Sierra. Yeah, I, I, agree, agree. I, you know, again, I, I don't necessarily think we need it, but um, I, you know, I serve the community, right? So I'm not going to make the decision whether or not we need it. I'm just going to uh, facilitate it and support it. Ms. Julian says maybe a specific tag with the channel. Oh, that's a good idea. We could do a, a vet role. I think that that's a good idea. Um, that's a perfect idea, Miss Julian. Okay. Let's do that. So it's kind of split. Um, it's kind of split. I kind of like the idea of the tag, the role. So Christina says as a vet, she gets more value out of the general chat than vet and then get vet resources from others, more targeted places. I agree. So what do you think? Hold on. Let's end this poll. I, I think, uh, um, I think uh, um, an, like a, a a role. What about a vet uh, role in Simply Cyber Discord server? Let, let's see this. Going for the super trooper look with the with the stash. <laughs> Does it look like I have a stash? I shaved. I shaved today. I mean, I, I shaved. Uh, Maybe I didn't do my mustache area as as good as the rest of my face. I basically I, I don't want to call it lazy, but like basically I just let my face grow, <laughs> and then when it's too much, I just take it all the way down and just let it repeat. I'm like my face is like a chia pet, right? <laughs> oh, a lot of people want the roll. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. We'll do the roll. Um, I gotta tell you, you you to you really don't want me dinking around in us in the um <laughs> discord server all right let's create a role what what would we call the role veteran or vet is vet considered derogatory is is it vet or veteran like what what all right so we're going to do the role okay so the role is the role is happening uh let's see uh create role uh new role we'll call it vet And we'll make it, okay, yeah, veteran. Yeah, good point, Chris. We don't, like a bunch of veterinarians come in. They're like, hey, we love animals. What's going on? Simply say, all right. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll do this and let's make it, I don't know, green, like military green. And uh, we will, uh, I'll have to get an image. Maybe we could do like the Simply Cyber logo with like digital camo or something on it. So so the role's there now. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and tag a couple people with it. Just so we don't forget here. Uh Chris Young, you can be the first. Oh my god, how does this work? All right, hold on. Um I'm already, oh, here we go. Oh my God, bro. All right, so Chris Young's now a veteran. Uh, we'll have to, I'm going to figure out a way to make it. Um, I, I'm going to figure out a way um, in order so you guys can self, self identify your role, right? I mean, you're a complete poser if you say you're a veteran and you're not. Um, but just, I, I, Chris Young, I made you the veteran because I wanted to make someone the veteran and I wanted to make sure that we move forward with this. Again, ideas are easy. Execution's hard, y'all. Um, I think we can get this sorted out. Mods, if you have an easy way to like make this happen, please. Oh, hey, you know what? Um, hold on. So check it out. Um, maybe we change the name from veteran to military. Right. Well, how do we distinguish between like active duty and retired or former military? Yep. Carrie, I know you're a veteran. I, I'm excited for this. Um, I, I'll tell you what, guys, 
we as a mod team will get the role sorted out and and I'll communicate tomorrow on the stream on how you can get the role. All right. I, I, I can't make it where I right click and add role for everybody. It would be like insane to manage. Um, uh, yeah, Josh Mason. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm good at certain things. You should not allow me to um, attempt to manage the discord server or the mixing board. Okay. Let's just be real. Uh, be know your strengths, know your weaknesses. I am self-aware. I really should not be tinkering with ser <laughs> discord server settings. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't think we need an, like, I, I don't think we need two different roles for active versus prior. I, I just something that encompasses both, I think would be good. Um, so fun. See what we do with jaw jacking all about good times. Oh my God. So good. So good. All right, guys, I'm going to boogie out of here. Got an A low to work. Um, got to get the cyber starters up. C come on. Hey, turn out today for the inaugural episode of cyber starters. I'm super excited about it. It's a brand new podcast. Uh, we got a bunch coming on, um, in, in 2024. Um, I, I, there's one that I can't disclose yet, but, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a well-known podcast that's going to be coming under, oh wait, uh, it's going to be coming under, um, simply cyber's banner here. Rhonda Rummerfield says SC military community. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any rules on how long the role name is, so we could do that. Um, All right. So I guess thank you, uh, community, for your thoughts. Um, I think some type of role that's a single role. I, I don't. I don't want to have like fifteen roles for different military, you know, situations. Right? Yeah. Maybe just maybe just military um, or something. I. You know what? Josh Mason. He's a former Air Force guy. We've got a couple. Um, prior military and active military people active in the simply cyber community. We'll get this sorted out. I promise you. And we'll uh, move forward um, and communicate it out. You know what? <laughs> Come to the um, all hands meeting on Thursday and we'll, this is like a perfect example of like something that would come up. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Um, we got a couple great things coming. Oh, by the way, let me just tease this out. Let me see. I want to see what it looks like. Cause I, I had, um, I had, so many of you may or may not know this. My sister-in-law is a full stack web developer and she's awesome at what she does. And she came and visited for the holidays and, um, and, uh, basically Christine, Christine Polika, Christina Polika, uh, had met her, made a recommendation and wants to help with, um, you know, books that I talk about, books that I read, et cetera. And I asked my sister-in-law if, if I could hire her to like build out, um, part of the website. Um, it looks like she's not done yet. Uh, so anyways, um, we are going to have, when I talk about books that I recommend books, you got to check out, we're going to have them all kind of in one repo. Uh, and it's going to look really good. I saw a draft of the website. It looks wicked cool. Um, so check that out. Uh, just maybe it'll be done by Thursday and I could share it on the all hands call. All right. Um, oh, cool. Service member, service member. Sounds pretty good. Cyber kill. Jane says she likes Chris's idea. Military slash veteran. All right. Thanks for all the, um, thanks for all the suggestions. We'll read, look forward to seeing you at one o'clock. Hope, hopefully everybody can turn out for one. I'm Jerry from simply cyber. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Congratulations again on 100,000 subs. Freaking awesome. Can't wait to have the um, the silver play button in the background. Oh, 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 oh. One, one other thing. God, so many things. I've got a really, really cool thing to share with you, okay? So many of you know, and then I got to go for real, okay? This wall right here is the backdrop to the live video podcast. And it's a big blank wall. And I've been really struggling with what to do with it. I haven't hung up the neon sign here. Oh, I forgot to turn that light on today. Whoops. Um, I, I have been struggling with this neon sign. I don't want to hang anything because I don't know what we're doing. 
Um, Mrs. Osier, who is, um, who, who's like creative director and, um, just amazing. <laughs> She's an amazing woman. Um, was like, Hey, listen, what do you think of this idea? What if on the back wall, we, we put like basically wood, um, that has gaps in it. And then you could stick like shelves wherever you want and move it around and it would look really cool. And she showed me some like mock-ups and it looks wicked awesome. Um, I want to show you. Look at this. Um, hold on a second. This is what's going to happen as soon as uh, Mrs. Osier. Um, hold on. I'm trying to find like. Um, Sam, I hold on one second. Of course, I can't find it while I'm live on stream. <sighs> um, whatever. Sorry, guys. I was so excited. I don't know what to search for, though. She showed it to me. Um, um hmm. Oh, well. Anyways, just stay tuned. It looks wicked cool. It looks wicked cool. Uh, I'll ask uh, Mrs. Ozier to um, send me uh, the picture she showed me yesterday, but French cleats, maybe that's what it's called. Thank you, Jesse. Let's see. Kind of, kind of basically, basically it's going to look like a cool podcast backdrop. Like it's, it's not, it's not, you know, it doesn't look like a garage shelving. It's like cool with like lines and stuff, but then you could put the things in and then finally, I'll be able to feature my Rita award with like a little light on it and the silver play button, which is token when you get one. I'm excited. And some plants. I'd love to have some plants in here. I'm a big plant guy. All right. French cleats, uh, wall treatment, a podcast background. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Yeah. I, I, I'll get I'll get the one Mrs. Ozier had and uh, and and share with you guys. It looks super cool. You know what I should do? I should probably put in this query and then type in Pinterest. Pinterest is always like, Pinterest is always like, oh, like in three easy steps you can have this, and you're like, oh my god, three steps, and then it's like, no, it's not three steps. Whatever. Anyways, stay tuned, guys. Thank you all so very much for turning out. Um, 1 p.m. Eastern time today, 1 p.m. Eastern time, right after the stream ends, right after this. So like in five minutes or 10 minutes, I'm going to be scheduling the first episode of Cyberstar. So it will show up in, um, on the channel and on the feed and stuff like that. Um, let me just show you what it looks like really quick. So you can see, I'm trying to find the French cleats. Um, let me see if I can, let me see if I can find this really quickly. All right. Like this is kind of what it's going to look like. All right. So if you're looking for it, this is what it's going to look like. Okay. Also, it'll be available on your podcast audio app of choice will be on afterwards, but this is what it is right here. This is Ryan. You guys are going to love him. This is me. I'm okay. And this is what it's going to look like. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you all so very much. It's been super fun. Love it, love it, love it. Let's go, 2024. Um, good luck, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time or hopefully later today at 1 p.m. Be well, everybody. And until next time, stay secure. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed that content. Keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope you enjoyed